The Barcelona test was our first chance to see the 2022 Formula 1 cars driven in anger, but as ever, there's no way of knowing what the pecking order will be. 3,109 laps of the circuit to barcelona Catalunya were completed across the three days, the equivalent of driving from Barcelona to the South Pole. That's quite a difference for our intrepid explorers as they got to grips with the new 2022 machinery, but just as the drivers have had to get used to the new cars, so have the engineers, especially as the teams have all come up with visibly different designs. But are there any distinct trends from the first week of testing? Let's have a look at a few technical talking points from the first week of running at Barcelona. Number 1. Red Bull and Haas Break Cover When Red Bull initially said that it would launch its 2022 RB18, it instead decided to paint the F1 show car in its usual colours and hope that that would be enough. But we know better than that. It certainly wasn't enough, and it left a number of onlookers wondering what Red Bull was hiding. Turned out it was hiding quite a wild side pod design, which we'll get into in a bit, but suffice it to say that it featured a very heavy undercut at the front. To create that, many of the cooling components have been positioned closer to the centre of the car, necessitating a larger inlet above the driver's head. Think Alpine last year. There's also some interesting detail around the opening of the floor's Venturi tunnels, which features a bargeboard-like extension over the top, with sharp exposed corners to produce and energise vortices to help shunt airflow outwards, to guide any tyre wake away from the floor area. Haas, meanwhile, had shown off a representation of its car during its livery launch, albeit a very early development specification. The actual VF22 broke cover two days prior to the start of the test, with a shakedown around the Barcelona circuit, featuring some very distinctive design cues. In particular, the front wing end plates, redesigned amid the new regulations, have seen some very interesting details. Haas's dive planes on the end plate are arguably the most interesting seen so far, sweeping downwards and forming a tab on the trailing edge. They'll work like a gurney flap and kick airflow outwards around the front wheels. The end plate's leading edge also features a tiny amount of scalloping if you look closely, which can reduce drag and noise around the front end. After spending the whole of 2021 developing this year's car, it's good to see that time has been spent on developing interesting new concepts. Number 2. Side pods come in all shapes and sizes You know what, it's kind of funny. You'd think that every single F1 car would look the same owing to the tight restrictions within the 2022 rule set, but it's actually proved to create a host of very different designs. One of the key differentiators in the designs has been in the side pods, with teams opting for a vast range of shapes and sizes to house their cooling packages and make the most of the new regulations. The likes of Mercedes, Williams and McLaren have opted for side pods that appear relatively conventional in modern terms, opting for a short ramped design to direct airflow around the floor. But even Mercedes has a revised package, dimpling in the leading edge corner to recover some of the outwash effect lost with the barge boards. But on the flip side, the likes of Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin have gone for long side pods with a deep undercut. Doing this means the airflow path moving along the bottom of the floor is shorter, while using the long side pod design allows more space for cooling gills. This has allowed both teams to make the rear outlet of the car much smaller compared to the teams like Mercedes. Red Bull's undercut feeds into quite a square-sided side pod, but also features a ramp shape over the top to allow the airflow paths to merge at the rear of the car. This undercut is extended with the extruded leading lower edge of the side pod inlet. Haas and Ferrari have gone for noticeably squarer designs, with Ferrari featuring a distinct trench along the top to channel airflow to the rear. The different designs come from some teams placing the cooling components down the centre of the car and others leaving them outboard to make the engine cover smaller. There's probably no one solution better than the other, it's just simply about which design works best for each team. Number 3. Porpoising We've already done a full video on the subject of porpoising, so feel free to watch that for a full explainer, but here's a quick run through regardless. Many of the 2022 F1 cars have been bouncing along the straight at Barcelona, producing a curious phenomenon known as porpoising. It's a combination of the stiff suspension needed to get the ground effect aero to work around the high-speed corners, and the Venturi tunnel suffering from a cyclical effect of gaining downforce and then losing it when the cars bottom out. It's something that the teams have had to work through, tuning their suspension packages to ensure that the cars don't bottom out too much on the straights, and yet also deliver the downforce in the high-speed corners. Number 4. Experiments with gills It's not a surprise to see a team's experiment with new parts in testing, with the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull sporadically adapted their engine covers to feature the cooling slots, gills, louvers, whatever you fancy calling them. Reintroduced into the rules after the 2009 design changes prohibited the use of them, the cooling louvers have been a popular addition to the grid, but haven't been a universal addition. 
By having them as part of the car, the teams are able to reduce the size of the outlet at the rear, reducing their blockage of the beam wings below the main rear wing structure. Red Bull appeared with their own arrangement of gills halfway through the first day, although only used them sparingly. Mercedes meanwhile was more liberal with the use of the gill augmented engine cover, offering more cooling options and could result in further bodywork changes depending on their success. It was also interesting to see those who had launched with their own interpretation of the slots in the bodywork experiment too. On some occasions, Aston Martin had blanked out some of the rear slots when the temperatures were much lower. In those circumstances, of course, the cooling requirement for the powertrain isn't quite as high, so blocking them off can reduce the overall drag effect. Expect more changes in Bahrain, where the temperatures are much higher, and more cooling is needed to ensure the powertrains remain in the right working window. Number 5. Bearing reliability across the field The likes of Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren seem to have good reliability out of the box. Ferrari managed the most laps in the Barcelona test, logging 439 runs around the Spanish circuit, with Mercedes circulating 393 times and McLaren doing 367 laps. There were periods when Red Bull and Williams were stuck in the garage to enact a few fixes, but both teams still managed 358 and 347 laps respectively. Alpine seemed to have good reliability on the first two days, doing over 100 laps on each, but just 12 laps for Fernando Alonso after a hydraulic failure on the last day ended Alpine's running before lunchtime. It was a similar situation for Aston Martin, close to doing 300 laps across the test before a blowout for Sebastian Vettel on the third morning, while Pierre Gasly's crash cut Alfa Tauri's Friday running short too. Alfa Romeo and Haas spent the most time in the garage, the former suffering a number of small issues throughout the test that restricted running, and although it seemed to be better on day two as rookie Guan Yu Zhou recorded 71 laps in the afternoon, more problems caused the final day to be more difficult. Haas also had to contend with sensor issues and a leak on the first day, along with a floor issue and continued to suffer from reliability problems thereafter, which left their Friday running at just 9 laps. But there's two weeks between Barcelona and Bahrain to get on top of those issues, so all is not lost at this stage. But what will we see in two weeks time in Bahrain? Hopefully a few performance runs, hopefully we'll get some idea of the pecking order, and hopefully we'll see a few more bits on the 2022 cars too. We can't wait to find out. <laughs>